The fact of the matter is that high voltage battery packs on hybrid electric vehicles are starting to need service. The oldest ones came to us in 1999. Technicians today have a lot of options though for servicing these battery packs. We can go to the salvage system and get used ones to put in the vehicle. We can get pieces and parts from the internet to remanufacture these things in our shops if we want. But today I'd like to consider a factory remanufactured unit and to help us with that is Dimitri from Dorman Products and he's going to help us understand that. So thanks for being with us. Tell us all about these remanufactured batteries from Dorman Products. Thank you very much for having us. The remanufactured batteries that Dorman Products sells, these are uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. This particular vehicle is a Gen 2 Toyota Prius. This battery's failure mode primarily is based on heat. Um, heat is really the biggest culprit for failure on most electronics. The nickel metal hydride chemistry inside of these batteries also wears with time. As you were mentioning, these vehicles have been on the road and in service for a very long time. The battery's purpose is to basically function as a repository for energy. So when the vehicle needs hybrid drive assist, it pulls energy from the battery and runs the hybrid drive motor. When you're braking and you're using regenerative braking, its function is to store energy for later. And with wear and change in chemistry in the battery, a process called crystallization, it actually increases the internal resistance of those battery packs. And instead of the energy being stored inside of the battery pack, it's actually being lost to heat. Heat again, as I mentioned, culprit for a lot of failure. The other thing is these batteries are actually cooled by cabin air. A lot of people don't realize that. So everything that is inside of the cab of the vehicle is basically susceptible to contaminating the battery. So if you have pets or you have a dog that runs around in the vehicle a lot, the hair that's in that cabin can actually get forced into the battery and cause the battery to not appropriately cool itself. That can cause heating and the heating will cause the battery chemistry to change and fail. We need to actually take a look at what's inside of the battery pack so you can point out those areas and the various different uh, modules that are going to have crystallization processes and things like that. Now look, don't do this. It says right here, warning, do not open the battery case. If the case is open, warranty is null and void. So you don't want to do this. We're going to take the cover off to show you what's on the inside and I've got the engineer from Dorman here to keep us out of trouble. There are several tamper-proof labels on the battery, and when they are cut, it does void the warranty of the battery. But since we're going to take the cover off, I'm going to cut these, and now the battery warranty is void on this particular battery. So don't be doing this in your shop. <laughs> Even though the service jack has been removed, as an extra margin of safety, I'm going to do a zero voltage check across these terminals to be absolutely sure that the battery is safe to work on as we explain the various different components inside the battery. And we can see that we're at zero voltage, so it's completely safe to work on. Let's get going. So, Dimitri, tell us how these battery packs fail over time. Absolutely. So now that we got the cover off of it, you can see that the battery is basically built by a series of prismatic modules. There are actually 28 in this Gen 2 Prius battery. And all these modules are wired in series. What that means is that this module and this module are wired in a sequential fashion to combine to create the high voltage that will drive the vehicle. What it also means is that each one of these modules has an amp hour capacity of six and a half amp hours. If one of these modules ends up getting weak or failing, the entire pack now is compromised. So let's say in this entire battery pack, one of the modules has a capacity of only four amp hours. That means the entire pack now only has a capacity to store four amp hours of energy and disperse four amp hours of energy to the motor. The battery ECU that's mounted right here in our battery doesn't have the capability of selectively charging one module. So that is one of the primary failure modes, is an out of balance. And typically once the out of balance between the weakest module and the, and the strongest module exceeds 20%, it's called the delta SOC of the battery pack, it will actually trigger a malfunction indicator and disable the hybrid system. Now one of the causes for one of the modules falling out of balance can be, like I mentioned before, heat. Heat and chemistry changes are really the culprits for failure on these batteries. And the heat is brought on by contamination. We were talking earlier about contamination from the cabin air in the vehicle, if you had pets or if you drive in a very dusty environment. Between each one of these modules, you can actually see there are small fins. 
Those fins allow airflow to come in from the bottom of the battery to the top of the battery and actually cool these modules. Well, if you introduce a whole bunch of hair or dust or debris into that, that battery will now run hotter and actually change the chemistry inside of it. As we spoke earlier about the crystallization that can occur inside of the module, increasing its resistance, which is kind of a, a vicious circle. It'll actually increase the resistance, create even more heat, then more crystallization, and it gets worse and worse. And speaking of crystallization, the potassium hydroxide that's in here over time is going to leak out a little bit, isn't it? It's very, very caustic. Absolutely. And it's going to have an effect on the wireframes and the connections. So how do you overcome that sort of a problem? Well, we can remove the cover and we can inspect some of the changes that Dorman's made to our remanufactured battery. As we were talking about earlier, these batteries are cooled by cabin air. So on a rainy day or on a snowy day when there's high humidity inside of the cabin of the vehicle, you have high, hot, humid air being pushed around these exposed metal parts that have electricity running through them. So it's really kind of the perfect storm for, for corrosion to occur, and corrosion brings heat. So what we do is every single one of these bus bars, if you look closely, you can see, actually connect the modules to each other. This is how we create the series circuit we were talking about before. All those bus plates are actually replaced in Dorman batteries. And what we use is, instead of using the factory exposed copper, solid copper bus plates, we use a solid core copper with a nickel plating on it. The nickel plating is what keeps corrosion from forming on it. We also, every single one of the wire connections, including the small gauge wire taps, these wire taps, by the way, guys, are how the battery control ECU is able to monitor each one of these battery module voltages to be able to determine what the delta SOC of the battery is or what the state of charge of the battery is. So each one of those on ours are fully crimped and soldered, as well as the high current being soldered to make sure that corrosion is not a problem on our batteries. Well, Dimitri, can you tell us a little bit about the plug and play capability of these Dorman high voltage battery packs? Absolutely, Jim. I'd love to. So as you were mentioning earlier, there are a couple of choices that professional service technicians have for servicing these batteries. At Dorman, we believe we've brought the best option to the aftermarket. And what that is, is basically a ready-to-install plug-and-play replacement. For example, if a technician wanted to purchase a Toyota replacement battery, they would actually only receive the module pack. The module pack is strictly the pre-assembled modules. They have to transfer over all their electronics though. So the battery ECU as well as the output stage relays have to all be transferred from the existing battery to that replacement battery. The Dorman unit is not only complete with all those electronics, but it's also full end of line tested and vehicle simulated tested. That allows the technician to know that that battery is ready to install and that there are no possible failures inside of the battery control ECU or any of the output stage relays. We also reinitialize any ECU that needs to be reinitialized prior to installation. That means you don't even have to have a scan tool to install this battery. We've taken care of all of that ahead of time. And that makes it a lot easier to be able to service it as a unit. That is great. Well, what about a warranty? Um, Dorman actually is proud to offer a three-year non-prorated warranty on this battery, um, excluding fleet vehicles. Okay, Dimitri, let's get this core set back. All right, we've checked everything off on our core return checklist to make sure we've done everything right. We're ready to put it in the box. Okay. You wanna make sure when you receive your battery that you look through the checklist, the pre-installation checklist, as well as fill out your warranty card and send that into Dorman to make sure we can track the warranty on the battery.